I'm Deary and I've read it before. If you are new, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back and I do apologise for the interruption to regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> With that being said, I'm going to return to Discworld today. And instead of going into the Wizards, which is the last major sub-series for me to look at, I'm actually going to look at some standalones. And the first two in the Discworld series are Pyramids and Moving Pictures. These are books 7 and 10 in the series, so they're still quite early days for the disc. All of the Discworld books are standalones. These are just a little bit more so than others in that they don't share characters with the rest of the series. It takes place mostly in a small delta in a very mm, Egyptian kind of zone. We are talking about a kingdom with pyramids, obviously that's the name of the book. It's a river delta, it's got a lot of ancient gods who are part animal, part human, and they all have overlapping roles in regards to the sun rising, the sun setting, um, harvest, uh, spring, water, rain, weather, all sorts of things. And the king is a god of this culture. And it's up to him to make sure things like the sun rises and the river floods once a year so everything can get watered and then to ensure the flood drains. Um, so he doesn't actually do much, this king. And the king's going to die. So he's called for his son to come back because his son is away at school. And the son is away at school in Ankh-Morpork. That's your basic setup. Tepic is at school at the Assassin's Guild. So he's learning some very mm, useful skills, <laughs> one could say. And when he returns to his father's kingdom, which will obviously on his father's death become his own kingdom, he starts to recognise just quite how, well, backward his kingdom is. And he tries to make some changes and is resisted very much by the head priest in even thinking about those changes. So in Pyramids you see a lot of the ideas that Terry will go on to play with quite a lot in this world. It's the first time we see him playing with the idea of structured religion and how that often differs from somebody of pure faith. And we have him look at the ridiculous nature of some of the gods who we will see in the other books as part of the large array of fabulous gods that Discworld has. This particular little country has just more of them. That mathematics is only slightly different to magic um, and really comes down to how many symbols you're using. All of these things play a part and it's really difficult to describe the plot of Pyramids because the plot kind of is the story. Um, Tepic's trying to have his country be more modern. The country's sort of fighting back. And gods happen and maths happens. A lot of maths and parallel dimensions and space-time continuums. And it's a glorious bit of fun. And if you live somewhere where it's legal, perhaps have something to aid the mental processes. <laughs> that, I think, might make it more enjoyable. Not that it's not enjoyable without. It would merely add a factor of enjoyment. So that's Pyramids. Pyramids is one of the books that can flesh out Discworld, but it's not hugely necessary in that none of the characters recur, except for death, because death's in all of them. Um, and I think that might even be it for recurring characters in Pyramids. Um, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. So, for what that's worth, Pyramids is one that you could skip if you want to. Um, and if you want to read it, go ahead. It's not going to hurt. It's quite a fun read if you're happy to be a bit confused. <laughs> that's Pyramids. Moving Pictures is a little bit different in that it's set in current Ankh-Morpork and it is a direct satire and it's the first of many. 
Terry Pratchett has played with satire a lot, and it's often elements of satire in his books. This is the first time the entire story is satire about a specific thing. And in this one, he's very much taking the out of movies, out of the cult of celebrity. This is also the first one of his books where if you have knowledge about that specific thing, you are going to find substantially more humour in this book than if you don't really know a lot. That's not to say there isn't any humour if you haven't got knowledge about the beginnings of Hollywood, because it is really funny. But if you are a movie buff, if you are aware of the things that went on as silent films went into talking pictures and began to be shown in colour and all of the different things that they tried in the early days of Hollywood, then you're going to get a lot of satisfaction out of moving pictures. It also pokes fun at a lot of the really big epic movies, movies like um, Ben-Hur, Gone with the Wind, um, King Kong, all of these really films that have become tropey, films that have images that have become iconic. We have the um, heroic animal trope. You know, we've got the, the rescue dog. Uh, and this is the book where we first meet our talking dog, Gaspode. He is not the hero dog, because he's a small, scruffy, disease-ridden terrier. But we do meet him in moving pictures. We meet some other familiar faces in moving pictures as well. Dibbler makes an appearance. I think it might be his first appearance. And... He doesn't change much from here. He's basically finding every possible avenue he can make a buck from. We also meet Detritus. And Detritus, later on in the Discworld story, will end up working with the City Watch. And this is how we meet Detritus when he's really looking for a change in what he wants to do. It's also where he meets his soon-to-be wife. So it's kind of nice being able to go back and look and see that this was the beginning of their little romance. It's about Hollywood. The dungeon dimensions have found a way. And they've found a way through a tiny little door in Hollywood. And the way you stop that from taking over the world, well, is to kind of worship it. And by doing that, you power up the guardian of the door who happens to be a man like golden statue carrying a sword um might sound familiar mm. so hollywood with its golden statue and the making of movies there are a lot of wizards in this one there are alchemists in this one we have the creation of popped grains and matinee sessions the patricians in it it's a glorious romp. There are chase scenes. There are monsters. Uh, there are monster scenes. There are um, tricks of cinema that were really obvious even back in the day. I enjoy moving pictures. Again, it's one you can skip. Um, it's worth reading. It's fun. It's. I mean, it's Terry Pratchett poking fun. It's 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 entertaining. Those are the two standalones for this time. Next time I shall be talking about small gods and I shall be talking about the truth. And I think that's my lot for today. So with that I'm going to love you and leave you and I'll see you next time.